I'd like to uh, share my Proxmox 6.2 and uh, Acme protocol setup uh, for generating certificates through Let's Encrypt. Uh, let me show you my environment here. So this cloud represents my uh, home network and I've got a Proxmox server that I just installed uh, pretty recently, and it, this is its host name on my LAN. This PFSense router is running the DNS and DHCP for the network, and, and so that's where this host name um, kind of lives. There isn't any uh, access from the public to this Proxmox server, but I would like to learn more about how to use the DNS plugin. And how that's going to work is that my Proxmox server is going to set up with Let's Encrypt to request that a, a certificate is signed uh, for this host. And in that, the challenge negotiation, we're going to have this Proxmox server create a new text record in my AWS Route 53 account where this one zone lives. And so uh, I've created a IAM uh, user that just has the ability to do that, and I've given it to Proxmox. So I'll show that in just a moment. Uh, but it has the ability to create this text record uh, for the host. So this is not, obviously, not the same thing as the certificate host name. So we need to do a CNAME to point Let's Encrypt when it is looking for the challenge uh, token or, or whatever, the, the, the random characters. Um, it's going to go to the actual uh, underscore Acme challenge dot this thing and that is going to be out in a zone on the public internet i've got a, a few name servers out there and one of the zones out there is going to contain this c name that's going to point to the actual text record over here this is my proxmox installation um, it's pretty uh, stock i've only created um, couple of, of things in here. Eventually I'm going to add more cluster nodes, but for now I've just got one. If I uh, switch to here, here is the one node. And there's kind of a mixture of settings um, that apply to the entire data center and then per node. So let's start. Here is the wiki page uh, describing how to set up certificate management and, and um, just to make sure it's clear what I'm attempting to do, I want to have a proper certificate issued and trusted by my browser so that I don't have to see this angry red text up here. If we look at the certificate in place currently, we can see that it was issued by the cluster node and it isn't uh, signed by a certificate authority that my browser acknowledges is valid. So that's the goal here is I want to issue certificates for this cluster node. So this wiki page describes doing that and there's a lot of options. This is good documentation but there's one step in here that I had to spend some time researching. It wasn't clear to me how what, what this actually meant. I don't know what the configuration file is that it's referring to. Uh, but I found the command to modify it in place and it seems to work out just fine. So as this says, the Proxmox server is using a project uh, called uh, acme.sh. It's a shell script uh, version of an Acme um, client that knows how to deal with all sorts of DNS providers. The one that I'm using is the Amazon Route 53. So uh, we tell it our credentials, the one that I just went and created, and then it can create that text record in the diagram that I showed. This page here I've opened up in this tab. This just has some uh, instructions for creating an IAM identity that is specific to 
doing DNS updates and I've performed these steps and saved the credentials out. Um, you can use this policy uh, or if you wanted to get more specific, you could update your resource down here and um, provide the hosted zone ID and really lock it down. Uh, but I only have a single host in my, I mean a single zone in my uh, Route 3 account, so um, it's effect effectively the same thing. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to create the Acme accounts. So uh, if I go server view, data center, Acme, and um, it knows about two providers here. I recommend um, we first create an account for Let's Encrypt Staging. Um, and uh, because there's rate limiting, uh, I believe, it's my understanding anyway, that the staging Let's Encrypt server doesn't have as strict a uh, set of rate limiting uh, restrictions as production does. So the the general recommendation out there is to use staging until you've ensured that your setup is working and then switch over to production. Good, and I'll do the same thing for production. Okay, with that done, let's register a plugin. And uh, I'm just gonna call this, I'm gonna give the plugin name the name of the zone that I'm updating. And here is where we can choose one of the supported DNS providers. I'm gonna pick this and then it uh, updates the key value pairs and I'll plug in my credentials. Okay, the plugin is now created. The next part of the setup is to switch to the node and generate some certificates. So what we do is add an Acme domain. And I'm going to switch my challenge type to DNS. And I've got just the one plugin to choose from. And I want to enter the host name. OK, good. And I want to pick my staging uh, account. And let's see how that works. We can see that we, we get an invalid domain error. And that is the problem that I mentioned uh, when looking at the, the wiki here, is that we need to tell the Proxmox configuration to use an alias. Otherwise, it'll attempt to put a text record in the wrong place. And then it can't possibly uh, complete after that. So we'll cancel out or dismiss this. And here I am logged in to the node. And what I want to do is take a look at the configuration settings currently. So this domain configuration, we want to update to, to have an alias. And um, I believe that if we do here is the secret text or secret configuration that we need to do. We need to specify our alias. An alias is that um, text it points to that text record that's going to be created out at Amazon uh, Route 53. So I have saved the command that I need to run. So this is going to update or replace the zeroth domain. And this already exists, and this already exists but we're adding in the alias value. So I'll execute that and just take a look at the configuration now and it does echo back that that has been saved. So now let's try 
to order a certificate. So we're doing better. Now we've got this text record created. Let's take a look at the content of that text record. So here's what Let's Encrypt is going to look for to see that uh, the challenge is met. The acme.shell is configured to wait 30 seconds, uh, and that allows the new text record to uh, appear in the, all of the name servers that are um, distributing those, those lookups. 30 seconds may actually be um, unnecessarily long. So we've got, uh, we are in the background, Proxmox uh, cycled one of the services to put the new certificate into place. And um, I'm just going to request this uh, again. And let's take a look at the certificate that we're using now. That's good. Um, this indicates that we did get a certificate and it's in use, the one from the Let's Encrypt staging. So everything looks good. If we were actually trusting this fake Let's Encrypt root, then it would be valid, but we're not, so it isn't. Uh, so let's continue and let's try creating a certificate with the production Let's Encrypt account. So I'll click the pencil and switch to production. And I'm not sure if I need to delete this first, um, I'm going to try to order a certificate and see if it, let's see what happens. We can request this again. Let's see if, yeah, we've got our new challenge content in place. And let's see if the production account succeeds and we get our certificate signed. Okay, let's see which we're doing good. So we've got a certificate issued by the real Let's Encrypt CA. And if I had sent the correct host name, it would have validated. Let's see if that's true. We're looking pretty good. We've got our good certificate and it's been signed by a CA that we already trust. That's pretty sweet. Hopefully that helps both of you that are using the same sort of configuration as I am.